A few years ago, I started hearing people talk about this idea of traditional values. And I thought to myself, what does that really mean? Do you know what it means? So it started me on a journey. And today, what I want to do is take you on that journey with me. You up for it? Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to start by playing a little game, because I like to have fun. And the game is really simple. I'm going to ask you five questions. And you can only answer yes or no. And I want you to answer for yourself and just quietly. First question, is learning and growing important? Right? What does it mean to be a lifelong learner? Is taking care of our children important? I raised three girls. I'm guessing many of you have kids as well or may want to have kids. Third question. Is taking care of our health important? Right, you get a little older, becomes a little more important. Fourth question. Is taking care of our elders important? You know, my parents are aging. They need a little more support. Hopefully my kids will be there to support me when I'm in that place. All right, final question. This is the big one. As a society, are we doing a good job? And really think about that and what that means. So if you're like 99% of the people whom I ask those questions, you said yes to the first four, and you said no to the fifth. Now those first four questions are about what we value. The fifth question is about what we are doing. This is what I think the real crisis we have right now. What we value and what we do are not aligned. And as an engineer, I had to ask the, the deeper question, right? Why? And the simple answer is, if someone can't make money doing it, it doesn't get done. And we're going to talk about that a little later. Fifteen years ago, I had the good fortune to go to work for a man and for a technology company that was built on what he called core values. And I got to see how he used those values to guide the company. And then those values for me became a compass for how I interacted with my coworkers and our customers. And they were very simple. Customers and employees. Without those two things, you don't even have a company. But innovation, integrity, profitability. Most companies use that one. But then there was my personal favorite, fun. Right? I like to have fun. In fact, I tried to claim the title CFO. Chief Fun Officer. You can guess why they told me no. <laughs> but at my time at that company, I worked to use those values in unique and creative ways. For example, every year the company did its annual food drive. And like most companies, we'd roll out the barrels. And if you were like me, you used it as an opportunity to clean out the pantry. Right, get rid of that can of peas that you were never quite sure how it got there. All right, who else does that? Okay, but I wanted to do something different, and I wanted to take advantage of a behavior that all engineers share. We like to build things. Okay, so I invited my coworkers to form teams, and then I convinced the company to give each team a budget. And with that budget, they could go to the market and buy fresh canned goods. Now, what were they gonna do with them? They were gonna build a sculpture. That's right, art out of canned goods. We actually had a name for it. We called it canned engineering. 
And then to get the rest of the company involved, I invited them to go to the, the local food bank's website and make a donation for the sculpture that they liked the best. And the sculpture that received the most donation was declared the winner of the, you ready for it? The Canley Cup. <laughs> but here was an example of how I used these core values, innovation, employees, fun, and created a much greater result than that old barrel model. So let's go back to the conversation around money. What is money? Right? It's in my wallet or it's a piece of plastic. But what does it really represent? It's actually a storage of value. I provide you a good or service and you give me some money. And then I can take it and I can use it to get a good or service from someone else. But at a deeper level, it's actually a technology. Right? We invented it. And over the course of human history, it's been many things. Grain, goats, gold. Now my personal favorite is cowrie shells. I think it explains why I like to take long walks on the beach. Any of you do that? And with all technology, it also creates behaviors. Right? Look at what's happening with cell phones in society. Have you ever done something with your cell phone that really wasn't what you wanted to be, what you don't value? And the behavior that our money is creating right now is competition and accumulation. Right? I can make money with my money. We call it interest or return on investment. And the result is we're putting money into things that give me more money, not that I really value. So that technology company I worked for, it was really, really successful. And I got to retire. But I wasn't done working. And I wanted to do something that was aligned with my values. So I had a conversation with my financial planner and I told him, I don't really care how much money I make with my money. He thinks I'm a little cuckoo. And what came out of that was the creation of a foundation whose mission is cooperating for a better tomorrow. And I knew I was going to have to evaluate grant requests that came to us. And how was I going to do that? What was my measuring stick? Can you guess where I might have started? Some core values. And the first one's obvious, cooperation. Right? For most of human history, we've create, competed over every kind of resource. What if there actually is enough for everyone? The second one is creativity. Right? We're facing unprecedented challenges. We either have to innovate or adapt. The third one, contribution. I actually believe each of us has something to offer. Our skills, our knowledge, our ideas, our time, our money. The third one is being dynamic. Things are changing faster and faster and faster and faster. And how do we respond? Fifth one, being humanitarian. Right, because at the end of the day, I think we're all just people that want to have a better life. Sixth one, transparency. We could use a little bit of that in the world right now, don't you think? Right, because it's through transparency that I can see the impact and the consequences of what I'm doing. And then the last one is enjoyable. Right? When we do things we enjoy, it feels different. Think about the things you do that you enjoy. I like to think of it as in 
joy. So the foundation has become, I think of it as an angel investor for social entrepreneurs. Who are the organizations and people that are building these new systems that are actually aligned with our values? One of them is an organization called Open Source Wellness. They offer community events powered by connection. And their goal, can they reduce the number of pharmaceutical medications a person is taking simply by connecting them with another person? Remember one of those values in the beginning? The next organization is called Safe Place International. They provide housing and community centers for LGBTQ refugees. Now they're often fleeing countries where they're being persecuted. And then they end up in a refugee camp where that persecution continues. I believe every one of us deserves a safe place to be who we are. Remember that value of being humanitarian. And the last one's actually a personal favorite of mine called the Boys to Men Mentoring Network. They work with young boys who do not have a man in their life. And I can still remember standing in front of a young boy and him telling me he felt like he could trust a man again after his father had left him 10 years earlier. So it's these kind of things that we really have to look at. Traditional values, maybe they're traditional behaviors Right? That conversation around what's the role money is playing in the world right now? And what if we could do it a different way? What if we could create a money that encouraged behaviors that aligned with our values? Like Japan. Japan has an elder care currency. And it's really quite simple. I give an hour of my time to an elder cleaning, doing errands, taking them to an appointment. That goes into my bank, and then when I'm an elder, I could use that to get support for myself, or if I have elderly parents someplace else in the country, I can use it to get someone to support my parents. See, there's a value stream there that's around that value of supporting our elders. Now, I'm gonna bet most of you use an alternative currency and don't even know it. How many of you get reward points or miles for some kind of credit card? And what can you do with them? You can buy stuff, you can get stuff. That's a currency. They actually call it a loyalty currency. That's the behavior that it's actually fostering. So we started with that game, right? The four values questions, and then what are we doing? It actually was a test because I think it's incumbent on each one of us to take responsibility for what and how we're creating society. And tonight, go home and think about it. What is it you really value? What are your actions? Where are you putting your money? Thank you. <laughs>